2020 Board Candidates Forum. My name is Kelly Corinne, and I am the Nominating and Elections Committee Chair. I would like to introduce our guests who have been instrumental in providing the sound system and video recording for this event. Damon Barnaby is over here. Provided the microphones and the speakers. And Damon manages the Chicago store, plug, but is also part of our community here in Savannah. And we also have Dale Robbins, who you may remember from the 20th anniversary. Uh, he'll be re uh, recording the event for us. Uh, the recording will then, sorry, be posted to the HOA website. Dale is also a part of our community here in Savannah, so thank you. And of course, the members of the nominating and election committee. So please stand as I call your name. Bob Jensen, is Bob here? No? Okay. Uh, Sharon Knox, in the back there. Joan Tober, Hannah Walker is up here. And Wendy Walker is our board liaison. Is Wendy here, Mitzi? Okay. And uh, Jerry Jensen and Judy Moffitt, who helped with the bulletin flyers. Thank you, ladies, I know Judy's here. Thank you, Judy. Um, and of course, our invaluable HOA manager, Gina Carpenter, who helped with everything. Yay. And at this time, I would like to bring to your attention the three by five cards you have on your chairs. Those cards contain the rules of conduct and define the process we will follow. You will also see that they are on the poster boards at the front of the room. Also, in fairness to all candidates, no notes other than the opening and closing statements have been brought in by them. So, and now we have our very special guest from the League of Women Voters, Barbara Becker, will be our moderator, She's right here. And we have Susan Black, also will be our timer, also from the League of Women Voters. So, welcome them. I will give the microphone to Barbara. And thank you very much for being here. And thank our candidates. As you can see, they're all lined up and ready to go. So I guess uh, I should go down and introduce them, or do y'all know them all? There's Les Shipley. There's Hannah Walker. Chris Shipley. Owen Chandler. Lindell Rowe. Angelina Hanan and Peg Cass. And if I mispronounce your name, I'm so sorry. Because there's two with the same last name, I'm going to forego our usual thing of Mr. and Ms. And I'm going to call them by their first names so that there's no confusion along the way. And what we do is we start out and we rotate who starts first. So shall we begin with their opening statements? Um, my name's Les Shipley. Uh, I'm running uh, for the board. Um, so just some background information. I think that's why we're all here today, to get some background information. Um, so uh, my family uh, and I, we moved to Tucson in 1996. Um, Savano wasn't known as Savano in those days. It was called the Solar Village. And about two or three years later, the developers uh, decided to change the name to Sabano, and there's a long story to that, but we won't go into that today. Uh, the developer, um, in particular David Butterfield, uh, invited me uh, to move uh, from Victoria, British Columbia, to Tucson, and um, which I did uh, to be the project horticulturist. Um, in those days, in the beginning, um, to, the development was 829 acres, and it was a, a beautiful uh, site. Uh, the vegetation was absolutely gorgeous, uh, a predominance of Palo Verdes. Um, so my first job uh, with my three children um, uh, was to uh, relocate and salvage the, the mesquites, Palo Verdes, so, uh, at the, um, and we developed a technique where we were able to box them in huge boxes. Uh, some of them weighed over two tons. Oh, God. Um, that's, 
Um, I should be looking at you. Should be somewhere over here more. Um, and we successfully salvaged uh, hundreds and hundreds uh, of trees. Um, the um, one side line I'd like to mention is is 2008. Uh, we bought the. Can't stop. That went by very quickly. Hi, I am Hannah Walker, and I um, cannot stand speaking in public. So I know most of you, and most of you know that I can talk till the cows come home, but this is kind of weird for me. So my husband and I and a teeny tiny baby moved here in 2010 to Savannah, and I have tried to be a very active member of our community. I've sat on... Um, several of our committees, and I know lots of you, and a lot more of you that aren't here, and um, I would just really like to be on the board to hopefully increase participation, and I'm so happy to see tons of you here today, or several of you, increase in part, you know, participation and um, communication with the board, and to keep Savannah kind of on track with the community, the quaint little community that it is, that we're raising our two daughters in, very happily raising our two daughters in. And yeah, that's me. I, I will do one-on-one -on -one talking for hours if you'd like afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm Chris Shipley. Um, my wife and I arrived in Savano uh, before uh, anything was here other than the beautiful desert in 1997. And we helped my father uh, move all the trees he was talking about that are in the landscape today in Savannah. And we put in the landscape that is here in Savannah and watched it grow, just as I've watched this community grow for the last 20 years. Um, I've worked on the board for 15 years. I have a lot of, I've gained a lot of experience through trial and error on this board, failing and winning, and, but listening to you. Um, listening to you is the way to serve this community. Serving uh, your interests first is the way I believe we should um, conduct ourselves. Um, I believe that we should spend our money wisely. We need to keep our community financially strong and our reserves, but we also need to have some fun and keep our community activities strong. Because Savannah is not just a housing development, it was born on community. And all the knitting clubs, coffee clubs, um, meditation, yoga, uh, mom's clubs, poker night for the guys, I believe in those two. But keeping this community financially strong, maintained and looking good is what I will continue to do. I've been your board treasurer for many years now as well. And I look forward to spending our money wisely. Thank you. First of all, I'm just I'm glad to be here. I want to knock out the tangible thing first. Uh, please vote for me. That way I don't run out of time on that. Uh, the second thing is, is just I hope that we all recognize the gift that we have in this. I, I've lived in other neighborhoods where when it comes down to do the selection process like this, I mean, you're, you're, you're begging people with hot dogs and promises of, you know, all these things to get people to just sign up for things like this. And so for you all to have... Uh, candidates and all of them to be so talented in so many different ways. Like I, I hope that we recognize that. The for for my family and I, like I mean, we were we were super intentional about our move here. You know, there, there's something special about Savannah. When we first moved to Tucson seven years ago, we didn't know anything about anything. Um, we our, our realtor showed us a house, um, a couple of developments down, um, and we we took it because we we were just needing to, to move into a house. We had um, a two-year-old and an infant at the time, and we just needed to find something. But every time that we drove past this neighborhood, we were like, well, that's, that's interesting. Look, that house is yellow. Oh my, you can do that there? Oh my gosh. And, and it was just, there was this spirit, there was this character, there was this community that was present in this space that every time that we drove by, we were so envious. And then slowly more and more, our lives 
became super entwined with this, uh, with this place, whether it was the, the shops that we were going, the ballets, all the, all the different things. And so when we had the opportunity to move here, it was because of that spirit, because of those front porches, because of meeting each and every one of you. And so my intent um, of, of being a part of this is just to ensure that when we conduct the business of who we are as Savannah, that we never lose sight of that spirit. Good afternoon. My name is Lindell Rowe, but my friends know me as Lindy. I moved to Zavano a year and a half ago, almost exactly, um, from Anchorage, Alaska, where I lived for 34 years. My husband and I have owned property here since 2016. I love the opportunity of meeting the residents here. I have found such friendly attitudes from all the residents that I meet. I remember our first walks here, um, and the cheery hellos that we would get from other people who were out walking. This is a great walking neighborhood um, with businesses nearby whose number I hope to see increase. Uh, I appreciate all the old trees here, thanks to the Shipleys, and um, would like to maintain them and then replace them as needed. Even though I live in the city of Tucson, I refer to Savano as my town, and that's reminiscent of, you know, where I grew up. I grew up in a small town. I plan to work hard to maintain and improve the community's unity. The more we work together, the more strength we have to do two important things. Maintain the wonderful qualities of Savano and change those things that need to be changed that the community agrees on. I'm committed to, the, to this community as a full-time resident, and if I'm lucky enough, as one of the new members of the Savannah One Neighborhood One HOA Association. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Angelina. Uh, I am happy to be here with all of you today. I know I look like I'm 18, but I promise you I'm much older than that. <laughs> genetics. I have a three-year-old. Um, my husband and I moved here three years ago, but I've been involved with the community for about uh, coming on nine years. I'm the ensemble director at Ballet Rinka, so if you see dancers running around and they're acting up, you can call me. Um, they are very scared of me, or so they act. Um, so I am a homeowner. I'm also a landowner in that I own one of the last mixed use lots available in this community. Uh, and an employee of Ballet Rincon. I think that gives me a well-rounded and unique perspective in matters of relevance and importance to this community. And I am I'm a community lover, so I, I feel that open communication is key to finding out where we can go as a group progressing forward. And so I'm very happy to be here today, and thank you for being here as well. Hello, I'm Peg Cass, and uh, I don't look like I'm 18 anymore. Um, Savano, to me, has always been a real proactive community. Uh, everybody knows why you live here. Solar energy, water conservation, at-home businesses, green initiatives, all the things that were and still are important to me are right here. I often get the response when people ask me, where do you live? Oh, I live in Savano. Oh, I love Savano. Oh, that's so nice. I'm sure most of you have heard that. Um, I even saved a magazine I have up here. There's no notes in it. Um, from Sunset, uh, 2004, um, where Savano was voted the best new community. And I was living in Connecticut at the time. Um, and I was so excited when I saw that, uh, that recognition. Um, what do I see my role on the board as being? Well, I'm running for the board because I want to see Savano continue its history of being a proactive community. My motto is, change is not a four-letter word. If, initial plan if the initial planners of Savano were not proactive, this community would not exist. As a board member, I would want the board to help the residents continue to make Savano a leader in what can get accomplished with cooperation, transparency, and a can-do attitude. I dislike hearing 
we can't do this because of that, or the city won't allow it, or the board won't allow it. I'm not naive enough to think that everything that everybody wants can get accomplished. But if we want to attempt something as a community, we should at least try. I know we have existing issues, including Northridge erosion problem and live work issues that need to be addressed, but I would like to serve the community by moving forward together to keep Savannah the leading community that it is. The first question is, why do you want to be on the board? I, um, my husband and I own two houses in Savannah, and both of them are in areas. We have one in Northridge and one on Renewal, so both of them have some issues in the areas we have our homes. And, um, you know, because I, I love my community, I love where I live, and I like the quaint family, you know, from infant to, to Nana and Papa's demographic we have in here. And I just really, it's important to me that we, we keep it that way and that we, we maintain our, you know, sustainable image. And I just, you know, I've served on several committees and being on those committees has, you know, made me aware of, of a lot of our bylaws and our governing documents. So I think that being on the board is the next step after sitting on the committees and, and knowing where to get, you know, different documents and, and things moving forward in our quaint little community that I love. So I just, I'm ready to give back to the community that gives a lot to, to me and my family. I want to be on the board <clears throat> because I've been here uh, when I was working in Savano and was not yet a homeowner uh, for the first couple of years. Um, I went and I looked around at the different uh, communities that were offering homes that I thought I could afford at the time. This was 20 years ago, or 17, 18 years ago. And um, I realized how special Savannah was. Um, all the talk about uh, front porches and uh, great landscape, community. I guess the first two years I didn't understand it as a 25, 26 year old. Um, but my wife had just had a baby, or was about to have a baby, and then it clicked. Savannah was different, and all the talk about community clicked, and I wanted my children to be a part of that. So I served this board to make sure that we keep what's special about Savannah, um, to make sure my kids have a great place to go to school and live and play, to make sure the older people have everything, they've, everyone feels included. And I also want to make sure to continue on this board that we have the finances and, the, and, and use our CCNRs fairly and make sure our finances are strong so it'll live, Savannah will be what is special for many decades to come. Thank you. I think uh, the biggest particular reason is that community has to be nurtured. And we have to be intentional about it or else we run the risk of taking community for granted. And then we just become any other neighborhood in, uh, in Tucson. And so I, I think that that, that is the, the most important aspect of it. I, I think that one of the reasons why uh, I found myself signing the paperwork to do it was just in the hopes of maybe offering a newer perspective um, as, as someone who, you know, really spent many years, you know, working to, to be able to even move into this neighborhood. Um, and, and to, to just offer that enthusiasm, that joy, that hope um, that comes from being able to be a resident of Savannah. Um, I speak institution, and so I think that's helpful, which is not always, you know, as, and so, so I, like, I understand how boards work. <laughs> we, we, we do these things in the military, the church, the nonprofits uh, that, that, I'm, that I'm involved in, and so like, I just kind of get, I know how these, these types of things uh, tend to work. The, I understand that in order for us to maintain many of the principles that, that center us uh, here in the community, oftentimes those take difficult decisions. And I understand you know, the importance of being able to make those difficult decisions. And so and I think at the end of the day, the board has to reflect that boards matter uh, and that they have to reflect the character of the community they serve. And so you do that with, through listening, 
Um, and you do that through transparency, and, and you do that with intentionality. Back in April, when we were celebrating the 20th anniversary, I got involved in helping to design those posters that are out there on the board, and I learned so much about this community, and um, all is original and tense, and um, I wanted to make sure that all of those things kept going, or improved, or got better. Um, I've been involved as much as I can in, in uh, the community unity of this. Um, I organized that GAIN um, thing back in October to get people to know their neighbors better and such. And um, I would just like to see um, more involvement from this community and hopefully more involvement of the different generations. Um, the kids, the working parents, the um, and I, maybe it's just what I'm attending, but a lot of times I see a lot of the people that are retired, and even when I look out at the bases here, um, we have a, a lot of the little bit older generation, and I want to do things to make sure that there's a lot of communication going on between the board and all the members of this community, um, including um, all generations. So, hope I become one of your new board members. Thanks. Hi, so the board serves the community. I, I see it as also taking what people live here, their vision, and guiding it so that we can create, you know, a spe continue to make this place that we live very special. Um, I am a what they call third culture kid, so I was born in New Jersey, I was raised in Asia, moved around a lot for my performing arts ballet career. And so I've had a lot of experience in working with multiple types of people, diverse populations, um, and I think ultimately being a good board member and part of the reason why I want to serve is because I'm really good at listening, I'm really good at project-based organization and tasks, so if you give me a list and say blah 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 needs to be done, I'll go ahead and do it, say it's due by tomorrow, I can get it done, technology doesn't frighten me, neither does bureaucracy. I lived in communist China as an overseas Asian, and I tell you what, when you need to get your passport photo taken, you have to go back three million times with different, oh, you forgot this one piece of paper with this one little thing. Okay, go home, get it, come back the next day. So I have a lot of patience, I, and I enjoy doing these things. I enjoy getting to know people, I, and it doesn't, it doesn't annoy me, nor does it irritate me, it actually exhilarates me. So. I think that's why I would be a good choice. Thank you. We bought our first house in Savannah in 1999. <coughs> Lived here since 2004, and I've always worked uh, nights, so I've never been able to serve the community and give back to the community, with the exception of I'm the one that fills all those dog bag stations. <laughs> so I hope you folks use those bags when you need them. That was my contribution because I always walk the dogs in the morning so I can fill the stations. But why I want to be on the board is really to give back to Savano. Savano's given me such a joy living here. Uh, I've met a lot of people, not just my neighbors next door, but I know people on the other side of the neighborhood um, because people are so friendly and you stop and you talk. And, the neighborhood's beautiful. Um, I want to maintain that. Um, and the last thing that I concerns me, because I walk my dogs, is safety. Um, I'll say in my uh, closing statement what my, my, most of my job was working as a paramedic. Um, in my, that was my career. And when I see people flying down night bloom, and flying down Thunder Sky and Savannah Boulevard, you know, even they've taken the corners so fast, it really concerns me because I see kids walking to school by themselves. I mean, that's, it's great that they can do that, but I'm just so concerned that we're going to have a safety issue with that, and that's one of the things that I'd also like to address. Actually, I've been on the board for almost 20 years. It wasn't my idea. Um, I've been on that board before there was an HOA. The declarant, Fannie Mae, uh, wanted participation 
from homeowners, and they asked me uh, and another fellow called Don Engelston uh, to be on the board to represent the community, even though there was an HOA. <clears throat> so um, I got quite a unique knowledge, um, especially in executive uh, meetings um, where there's a question of what happened uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I actually have a good memory and I can recall. It might be sometimes anecdotal, but in general it's, it's pretty accurate. Um, I'm on the board for another reason, and that is to uphold the declarant's vision. And that, that is um, a, a vision um, um, which incorporates um, three, um, three distinct um, um, land use codes, um, general, uh, mixed use, and, and, um, and commercial. Um, these are separate um, uh, land divisions, and uh, each has to be represented. So, to cut a long story short, I have no option but to be on the board because commercial has to be represented. Thank you. Um, every board member is a volunteer. Have you volunteered and been a member of any HOA board committee, such as the Design Review Committee, the Budget Committee, the Savano Common Area Asset Committee, or the Events Committee? Please say which committees, and we'll start with Chris. I've been on the Nomination and Elections Committee, and I've been uh, spearheading the Budget Committee, Budget Committee for many years. Uh, and I've been on the board for, and liaisons to, to those committees as well. That's what I've done. <laughs> Any words of wisdom? Words of wisdom? <laughs> Just spend your money wisely. <laughs> No, I haven't volunteered for any of the, the HOA committees for Savannah. Before this, we lived in Mesquite Ranch, and you know we would help out when we can. We did kind of more of the social, like would help out with the social stuff, the the AKA trying to get more generations there. Because I, mean, I, I don't know why, you know, kids don't like coming to candidate forums, but um, <laughs> you know, so we so we were we were part of that that effort, um, and you know, I mean, it's, it's the same challenges. I mean. You, know, you, you do these things and you bring your kids and, and, um, and hope that, that we can, you know, trick their friends into coming. Um, but, uh, I mean, just in terms of volunteer, I mean, th we, we volunteered again for, the, for those types of communities. Uh, volunteer at the Savano School, we're heavily involved at the, the Savano School, and so that's been probably the bulk of my Savano-based um, volunteering with ensuring that that school, which is an asset to this to this community, and I hope that y'all realize that too, because that, that is such a unique um, a unique expression of edu education there, and so um, so that's been the, the biggest part of, of the volunteering that I've done with the Savannah specific, um, and then just other volunteers. We we volunteer a lot just because evidently we don't evidently we don't have a, that much to do. So um, and and so so yeah. Um haven't been on um, any of those committees that she named, but I have been involved as much as I can since I moved here. I got involved with um, Catherine George and I. Um, she did the, the research to come up with the, all the facts that we wanted to put on those storyboards that are out in the hallway, and then I made them look pretty, um, and that's how I learned so much about Savano and the history of Savano and the original intent of Savano. Um, and then I also organized the um, gang gathering, which is getting Arizona involved in neighborhoods that, that we did last October. And it was my intent that I saw this thing, you know, they were doing it um, Tucson wide, and I thought, oh, that would be cool for Savannah if we could get, you know, maybe even three gatherings. We had eight. We got eight different gatherings around Savano um, where people were coming together um, for potlucks or hot dogs or whatever, and then the um, police department came by, and um, so they, they, that was to improve that relationship between neighbors and 
um, the police force. And then I also helped co-coordinate co the luminarias um, this past December. Um, and whether I get on the board or not, I'm going to stay involved in this community and I hope to do more game gatherings and any other um, community-wide things that we can to just improve that unity of this community. Thank you. So I am emerging from the fog of toddlerhood. <laughs> My daughter's three and a half. Um, so today I have not yet served on any committees, but I look forward to the opportunity of doing so in the future. Uh, I am a member of the loosely formed Responsible Pet Committee. <laughs> We're so loosely formed that all it involves, if anybody else wants to join, is having a set of keys and coming to the office to get bags, <laughs> to fill the stations. That's all. We, we, we did work for a while on a dog park uh, idea, but um, basically we're just here to service your pet's needs. Um, yes, I have uh, served on committee, the Design Review Task Force. Um, this is made up of about four or five people. It lasted, more. Oh, I don't know, maybe a year. Uh, we had many, many meetings, and it resulted in sort of a standardization of, of colors, of the houses, of um, um, everything that, that was visible in Salado became standardized and it became a manual. And I think uh, most of the, I hope that all the, the members of the design review committee have that manual. It's really, really important. Um, I haven't served on any, any other committees, but uh, we are certainly blessed with um, uh, a well-rounded uh, bunch of people that, that serve on many, many committees that make uh, and preserve uh, our value, uh, our, our home values. Um, it's so important that we enhance and preserve our home values. And that's what the Design Review Committee does. Thanks. Yes, let's see. I have, this is my second time that I have been on the Nominations Elections Committee, which I think is the the one I have the hardest time with. There's a lot of work goes into that. Getting some really cool candidates is one of the jobs. Um, I have been before the Design Review Committee several times, and I've sat on the Design Review Committee. And Tina Solis and I have been doing the Events Committee for a couple years now. We took the handoff from Mark. And, um, before we took the full responsibility, Tina and I would do the 4th of July Children's Parade and the Easter egg hunt. And um, yeah, the, the events committee has four committees. And that's, we have the Easter egg hunt, which is so much fun, and that takes tons of volunteers, and we always get it done. And the 4th of July Parade is also is another really fun one, and we love, love, love the folks that come out and clap us on and, and help us lead the parade. All the children and families get together in here and decorate their bikes and wagons and whatever else. And um, Oktoberfest is always a lot of work that Tina and I could not get done without the coffee group. And so we, we managed to work with all the different ages in our community. The top coffee group's a big help. They get together and, and prepare the brats the night before. And wow, I'm running out of time. Look at that. And then the holiday party is, you know, we come to the community to help cook the major dishes and bring potluck stuff. And so yeah, there's our, and then we do block parties, Ada, on our street that I find myself pretty involved with as well. Not that that's an official committee, but just thought I'd put that out there. Okay, this question will start with Owen, number three. What is the difference between the HOA and the Neighborhood Association? The HOA is the, I mean, the HOA has a, I'm trying to think of the word, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a much more defined entity, and it has these responsibilities that that really kind of have like fiduciary impacts, there's, there's, there's legal consequences, there's, there's all these different, these different things that take on a heightened level of responsibility, um, and so it, 
it just takes a, it takes a different level of, of attention. Um, and so. Okay, if I understand what, you, what you're referring to with the Neighborhood Association, I believe that's Houghton South Neighborhood Association, and I've attended at least one of their meetings, and because I wanted to find out what was the difference between them and our HOA. So I see the HOA dealing with just our community, um, managing um, the look and feel of the place, the rules and regulations, the CC and R's, and, and such where the Neighborhood Association is more of um, dealing with those bigger, broader issues that might impact more than one neighborhood, um, one homeowners association. Like if a um, quarry was going to be put in somewhere nearby and that would impact our water and such, they would be more of a lia liaison between um, multiple associ um, HOA associations and the city in making sure that those kinds of things um, didn't impact um, the individual homeowners associations. Thanks. So I see the HOA as really um, governing more the bones and structure of Savannah as a community, um, whereas the neighborhood association can is a little bit more how shall I say? How shall I say? It, it has let. It's not that it has the HOA has more responsibility in that it can really affect the way something grows, the direction that it goes in. Whereas the neighborhood association kind of comes in along the edges in important ways, but perhaps not as ground level as the HOA can. Well, I see the HOA as being structured um, as it has to be with CCNRs and uh, requir government requirements. Uh, neighborhood association I see as being loosely, more loosely structured. Um, and doing events like um, we had a big meeting, I'm going to say six months ago, but I couldn't really tell you the day, where the hospital representatives and people came to inform the community of what was going on around the community. And um, I see the Neighborhood Association is doing more of that type of work, and the HOA is really being much more structured and specific to Savannah. The HOA is basically mandated to enforce our governing documents. It also uh, has a fiduciary responsibility um, to make sure that our common areas are well maintained and our money, our dues, are well spent. While the Neighborhood Association is a political association, uh, the city of Tucson uh, gives uh, some money to it, it pays postage and so on and so forth, but it's basically political. So a good example, uh, one or two meetings ago, HRA meeting, uh, a member stood up and we asked that these, the, our association consider paying for repaving all our roads. Well, so that woke me up and um, I pointed out that, you know, the roads belong to the city and it is the city's responsibility to pave the roads. So um, that's the distinction. One is a fiduciary duty of, of, the, of the board to look after its common areas and, and to enforce its governing documents, while the, while the neighborhood association is more of a political group. And it, it's much more expensive as well. It goes all the way down over on the east side uh, to Rita Ranch. Thanks. Yeah. Sheesh, what he said. <laughs> okay, so our HOA um, is who we pay our dues to, and their job is to keep our money safe and spend it responsibly, and to keep our HOA also keeps Savannah clean and beautiful, um, and that's where all our government governing documents are and things of that nature. That look over our neighborhood, specific to us. So we pay into them. 
Um, the Neighborhood Association is a city entity that is our communication, or is supposed to be, our communication to the city. And they look out for more things such as um, speed limits, they're responsible for speed limits, our streets, um, which I'm familiar with, because the renewal lane, which is kind of a sore spot with some of us. It's the one street that the city doesn't own, that we own. And um, that's about it. The HOA, our HOA, does something unique. The NA generally takes care of gatherings, com or community gatherings, and things of that nature, but our HOA actually took that over at some point, which is fun, and we do our own public gatherings, which, as I said, I'm a part of, and love all the volunteers we can get. So, yeah, I think I covered it. All right, I'm sure you're getting tired of hearing about this. <laughs> Uh, a neighborhood association is something that the city of Tucson has set up. Many little regions within our city, um, are the closest, the one that Savannah would be in would be the South Houghton Neighborhood Association, and I do encourage you to join it. But they, it is a vehicle to communicate <coughs> for the city to communicate to these little regions of the city, and for those regions to communicate to the city their concerns. And so we have a park going across the street with lakes, uh, ponds, and landscape, and bathrooms. And some of you may be interested in learning about that or have concerns or questions. And that will be for the Neighborhood Association to, um, to be your liaison to the city, your vehicle into getting heard for the city, to the city. City of Tucson Water, City, city of Tucson Water is putting that in. Uh, it's kind of exciting. Um, HOA is what we're all here about today. Um, from Drexel to North Savannah Boulevard to um, Nightbloom to Houghton, that's what the HOA of Savannah is representing. Everything inside those walls is what we're here for today. And that you're here to pick your candidates today, you pay your dues to the HOA of Savannah, and we're here as, a, as the board, at the board is to spend our money wisely, and that's what you're here for today, is to hear about all these things. But the HOA is what you're here for today. We're here to enforce and carry out the CCNRs, the governing documents, and to keep this place beautiful. Thank you. So, I want to start that one, which means that Lindell will start the next one. And the next question is, what are the reserves used for? The reserves um, are money that is collected um, that it's kind of like a savings account for our HOA that some money is sort of put into it on a regular basis so when those big things um, need to be repaired that maybe have been okay for 5, 10, 15 years but now they need a major um, repair and that's a big chunk of money well we've been saving all along and putting that money in the reserve so when that Tennis court needs to be completely replaced. We've got the money saved up to be able to pay for that. Um, at some point, all of our amenities here are going to need a major makeover, whether it's the pools or the tennis courts or um, the outside of this building um, and such. Um, that's what the reserves are. They're a savings account. Um, so in any time in the future when we need to do those major repairs, um, we have the money set aside to take care of that. Thanks. Can I quote Nana and say what she said? <laughs> um, first thing is it's wonderful that we have healthy reserves because fiscal responsibility is very important. Um, but yeah, it is, it's there to grow first and hopefully not be used because we are managing our dues appropriately each month, each quarter, each year, so that repairs, things that need to be taken care of are taken care of within a budget. However, if something, an emergency or something unexpected does come up, then there is that reserve that is there. Yeah, if anybody here has owned a timeshare, uh, <laughs> you've probably heard the words special assessment. And uh, 
the reserves are a way to avoid <coughs> special assessments, um, to have a healthy bank account, to address problems like the erosion problem. I mean, when I moved here, I never thought there was going to be an erosion problem. I mean, I kind of did. It was, you know, you look at the, how steep some of those hills are over there, but not being an engineer, uh, I was hoping that wasn't going to happen. But, you know, when we have an issue like that that faces the community, um, it's good to have a healthy reserve so we can avoid those special assessments. Um, and I do believe, I read in the minutes, that uh, the board recently divided up some of that money so that it was in bank accounts um, to be insured by the government. Uh, so no more than you know, $250,000 uh, was in any one bank account, if I'm correct in reading those minutes. Reserves um, um, is a savings account. Uh, mandated by resolution. Um, this savings account is only to be used to uh, maintain or repair uh, our common areas. Um, it, I think uh, some years ago our reserves went down to 29%, which is extraordinarily low. And quite a big chunk of our budget goes to what that we pay and I do is goes to reserves. And I think um, I think we could be at 57, 59, 60 percent now, which is, in my opinion, really good. Some people would like to see it higher, but um, in general, uh, if, you, if you can get to the 60 percent um, rate, uh, um, that's a good that's a that's a good percentage to be at. Um, when a real estate a uh, agent uh, introduces a client. To, to, to buy a house in, in Savannah. Um, the first thing he or she would look at is how much money do we have in the bank for reserves? And probably we got some flat from real, real estate agents years ago when we were that low. It's really important in case there is a catastrophe that we have money in the bank. And uh, right now, uh, because of uh, we, the way we do uh, our finances, our reserves are, in my opinion, very healthy. Um, our reserves are, like everyone said, our, our bank account, our, kind of our safety for disasters. Um, they take care of not yearly maintenance, but of, of maintenance of the pools, the tennis courts every couple of years when they need to be resurfaced. Um, they're what we hope to get money out of to help with the North Bridge wall. Um, and that will be um, a task. And our reserves is recently paid for fixing the roof over all of our heads. So our reserves take care of our common areas, but not on our, um, not on our daily, not daily maintenance. It's maintenance that comes over time or disasters or, you know, big ticket items. So, that's about it. All right. Our, um, our reserves are getting healthy. They're at 56%. As Les said, they did go down to 20, 29, 25%. And that was kind of nerve wracking. I've worked hard to increase the money in our reserves. I would like to see them go to 70%. Um, and I will continue, if allowed, to do that. Um, the money in the bank to fix our pools, our, our tot lots, our common areas, trees that break, uh, fall over in windstorms, uh, pool pumps, this roof, this building, this building is in our reserves, is what those reserves are for to fix and maintain when the light bulb, when the, these big ticket items, the, just the tennis court alone is $100,000 to replace, maybe maybe $140,000. Um, we need money in the bank to fix these things. We're 23, 21, 22 years old as a community, and each year it takes more money to fix and maintain what we have. So 
Our reserves are healthy. I've worked hard with our budget committee and, committee and all of you have allowed us to grow our reserves and thank you for that. Because as a younger person here, I want to live here forever. And I don't, if our reserves fall to a low level, it, it, I will be paying the brunt of it 20 years from now. Um, so everyone has to pay a little and we'll, our reserves, we won't have special assessments. So thank you for encouraging our reserves to go up. So it's gonna be interesting to see if I can think of something new that hadn't already been said. Uh, I know that my, my kids are kind of hoping that the reserves will go to offset a retired, uh, a retired facility for alpacas. I don't know if that's <laughs> NCCNRs, but um, you know, one of, one of my favorite non sequitur quotes that I would think about a lot when, when I was deployed was that there are no known unknowns and unknown knowns, right? Uh, and what that means is that there's just limits to, to our human understanding um, and that we need to be prepared uh, as prudently as possible for the things that we just can't anticipate. Um, and so, you know, I mean, this reserve fund, the goal of that is to, to, to give us as much responsibility um, to offset those things as possible. I, I think, though, because, like, I have worked with churches that are like 150 years old, which means that oftentimes, you know, there's a lot of unknowns that are crumbling in and, and, and things like that. And so I think that when, in, when conversations like that begin, um, it's important that difficult conversations about whether or not to dip into reserves, again, has to reflect the character and the values. We can't fight each other over it. Um, it can't be something that, that really just like undermines the integrity of the community that we have. And so, um, so we have to just be, to be honest and transparent whenever we, we have these conversations about having to, to dip into things like the reserves. So. Yeah, um, Angeline's going to start with the next one, and this is a convoluted one, so y'all all pay close attention, okay? Do you have any working knowledge of the following governing documents, such as CCNRs, bylaws, articles of incorporation, resolutions, policies, budget, reserve study, plan, community statutes, any of those things, and tell us how you have knowledge of them. So basically the question is, did I read that huge binder that was given to me when I moved in? Yes, I did. I did read it. Um, I have retained as much information as is necessary for my current living situation here in Sedano. I know exactly where it is and I have referred to it and it is very um, comprehensive. Gina did a great job of making it available electronically so now you can word search it in a PDF, which I think is wonderful. Um, it represents a lot of work, vision, and I can see communication and compromise as this community has grown, so that is my knowledge of it. Well, uh, having lived here um, for quite some time and having also owned some rental properties in Savannah, um, I uh, have to make sure that my, not only do, am I familiar with the CCNRs, but also that my tenants are familiar with the CCNRs. So um, I, I have familiarized myself with the documents, um, uh, particularly the, the CCNRs, um, and it is much easier now to uh, look things up um, electronically, and I appreciate that. After 20 years, I certainly have a good knowledge um, of our CCNRs and governing documents. Actually, 20 years ago, I was working with uh, Dr. Wayne Moody, the street that is behind us, um, uh, working on the PAD, the specific plan, the CCNRs, and uh, I had some small involvement uh, in, in their creation. Um, yes, I have some. I would like to think more than average knowledge. Um, having been on the DRC committee and the NEC committee has made me familiar with a lot of our um, CCNRs and our government doc governing documents. Um, what I don't know, I do know, and I'm not afraid to find out to ask. I, I'm a real good 
you know, I, I communicate well and I can find the answers that I don't, that I have questions about, and I'm certainly not afraid to, to ask for them. Um, I have been reading a lot lately on our reserves because of, you know, it's been brought to my interest because I live in Northridge and just in our, you know, spending. So yes, I would like to think that I'm pretty familiar with most of the documents. And like I said, I'm not afraid to, to ask, and I know who to ask about a lot of questions that might come up. Well, after 15 years, um, I still have my red book. It is getting thicker, um, and I have read it. Uh, the government documents, the CCNRs, um, I've not only read it, I've lived it with you for the past 20 years and 15 on the board. Um, so I have a lot of practical experience with all of these uh, documents and implementing them, hope, uh, in my opinion, fairly and, and doing the best we can to, it, to keep them going. Um, I just, um, now I feel like I'm a full on board member. Uh, I have been for 15 years. I have the knowledge um, to serve you well, make great decisions on our behalf, and to listen to you. I will do my best to follow our governing documents, our CCNRs, and apply them fairly and evenly. And um, I do have actually a really good knowledge of all of them. Thank you. So I had the best realtor in all of Tucson, um, and when we moved in, we got handed the packet. And, and I did what I, I imagine most of you probably did when you got handed the packet. Like I, I went to like just store it somewhere in a closet, and um, they're like, no, no, you, need, you might need to read this. Um, it's, you know, Savannah was very, very particular about this packet. So I, we've gone through them, and we've gone before the design review board. We've had to do different things, and so we've, we've kind of learned you know, our lefts and our rights. Uh, so there is a, a familiarization with, with the Savannah-specific documents. But in general, I mean, these are everything that you listed are things that I've had experience with. You know, we've, I've transformed boards, I've transformed boards, um, trustees, different things with, in, in, in different things. We just created a nonprofit uh, in East Tucson called the Soul Food Initiatives, which I had to generate the articles of incorporation. We had to do file all this stuff with, with the government. And so, um, so I know how to do that on a, on a local standpoint. Uh, I've also done it um, in a deployed setting. So we, uh, when, when I was in Iraq, I built a resiliency center, um, which, was, which we, we did through the Army um, Ways and Means process in the Army Corps of Engineers. So um, it's weird. I never thought when I was going to seminary that I'd have as much knowledge <laughs> about you know these types of, these types of things, um, and so it is it is something that um, that I try to read to my to my kids each night so that they won't have the learning curve <laughs> uh, that I went through. Um, we we sew them on pillows and leave them around the house just as words of inspiration for them. So. Uh. Yeah, I've been looking into the CCNRs especially, but others, as different things come up in the community, I've been referencing them, um, especially with that understanding that whole thing about mixed use and um, the trauma our community's been going through with what kind of businesses we can have here or not have here and what are the rules governing it. Um, it, it's a challenge to read some of those things because you read it once and you think you understand it and then you read it again and you go, oh, well maybe it means this. Um, so the, the language in them is, is a challenge. Um, I also have the, the past experience before I moved here. I lived in a community in Anchorage, Alaska that I had moved to this new house just four years before I moved down here. And it was a new community and I went to the first um, annual meeting and there were, they were at that point where they were switching over from the board, the board of directors being the developers to actually handing it off to um, the residents. There were four of us at the meeting. Um, 
two of us, my husband and I, we only get one vote, and the other two guys didn't really want to be on the board, so I became, by default, um, the president of the board. Um, and so uh, a few of us ladies finally pulled this little tiny board together and we started really looking at it because it was a new development. And so there were things that we had to read and understand about the CCNRs. And so that's where I gained my experience of where to look in them and what the verbiage is and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, I've been trying to do my research and um, I'm glad that they're electronically searchable um, because that will help because they can get confusing sometimes. But I'm up for the challenge. Thanks. I'm very impressed. Y'all really have done a good job. And the moment has come for the closing statements. I thought I was going to get away with uh, not going first, but um, <laughs> not such luck. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, over 20 years ago, uh, my partner and I purchased our first home in Savannah, and we were asked by more than a few people, why do you want to live way out there? In fact, the realtor we were using tried to steer us away from Savannah. Well, we ditched the realtor, nobody in this room, and went directly to the sales office in this rotunda and spec'd our first home with Bednar Construction, and we haven't been sorry since. For the bulk of my working career, I was a paramedic and I set up four regional hospital-based systems um, in Massachusetts. That involved a huge cooperative effort between mayors, boards of selectmen, fire and police chiefs, hospital administrators, and officials at the State Department of Public Health. As you can well imagine, getting all these officials to work on a common goal was not always easy. But it was a worthwhile effort because we managed to give advanced life support care to over a million people in eastern Massachusetts. And I'd like to think now that I'm retired and I have some time, I can use these negotiating skills to serve the community of Savannah as a board member. Uh, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters, Barbara and Susan, for moderating the Candidates Forum and to all who've made it possible for today's event. Secondly, I'd like to thank all the prior and current board members for their service to Savano, uh, as volunteering can sometimes be a thankless job. I wanted to let them know that I appreciate their contributions to the community. Well, I think we've all said enough about uh, experiences, or I have anyhow. Um, and shame on me. If, if after 20 years uh, I'm not a qualified uh, board member. Um, but I think it just goes further than that. It's about striving to enhance this, this community, uh, the spirit, the pride of our community, the enthusiasm, the encouragement of volunteers. That's what a good board member should do. Uh, Fannie Mae, um, who gave us this unique place uh, to live, uh, home for over 600 families. Um, we are so fortunate. Um, when we set aside all the background noise, I think uh, we are so blessed to live in Savannah. Totally unique in the city of Tucson. Almost unique in, in North America. There's only been three that I know of, uh, solar villages, we'll call them, in the whole of the United States. They're all funded by Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae chose Tucson to invest its millions. And um, I'm so glad my family, my wife Doris, uh, live here, and we've enjoyed it for 20 years. Um, and I'm glad to represent the board, thanks. Okay, first. Happy International Women's Day <laughs> today. Second, it's just really been an honor to sit up here with all the nominees. I'm just really impressed with all of us and our answers and our dedication. Um, I've, I've said I am very involved with the community. I have been for the past 10 years. I know a lot of the generations here, from you know the moms groups to 
the knitting groups to the copy groups, and I, I work well with all of them and have a good relationship with all these different groups. Um, I would like for you to vote for me, not Pedro, <laughs> um, so that I can help keep Savano on its, you know, on its track to keep Savano beautiful and to keep Savano quaint and to keep Savano sustainable. And it's one of the reasons I live here, we live here, because this is the type of community that I want my children to grow up in. To see from example what it means to care about community and environment and to have a ripple effect out. And I want my daughters to learn to be community, you know, community, community activists. And, and that's why you know, we do what we do. That's why we volunteer. And yeah, I bring knowledge, I bring dedication. And lastly, I'd like to thank my husband for wearing that amazing shirt that he's wearing. <laughs> show it. Show, yeah, show it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, thank you, everybody. And remember, vote for Hannah Walker, not Pedro. <laughs> thank you. Um, I just first wanted to thank for everyone. Thank you all for coming. This is wonderful participation. I wanted to thank um, the nominations and election committee. What a, and the, and the League of Women Voters, what a wonderful put on meeting. This is, could be, I think, the best yet. If this is any indication of how our election's going to go, it's going to be awesome. The best election ever. Very, very professional. And I look forward to getting a cookie. I haven't had one yet. Um, Sorry, they're all gone. Oh, darn it. Um, as a board member, uh, a possible board member, I will, if you elect me, I will do my best to fairly um, enforce our documents, evenly and fairly. I will work to keep our home values up, our common areas maintained, the fences painted, and uh, problems solved. Um, and listening to you is the most important thing. And from that, I will make my, our decisions. After that, um, I have the time, the patience, and I have the enthusiasm to serve you, to serve this community. And I'm very proud to live in Savano, and I'm proud that my children get to, are living here too with all of you and go to our schools and share in our picnics. And I will always foster um, our civic and community-based ideas, any of the clubs, is the, that is the key to our success in Savannah, our uniqueness is our community. So with that, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah Savannah is a gift. It really is. And I think that y'all's presence here testifies to that. Um, you know, again, I can't stress this enough. It, it is an opportunity that I don't take lightly to be able to raise my kids in this. They, they run the neighborhoods, they play with their friends, they, they, you know, we invite people over and, and it's always the same, you know, just the, just the, the way that people are just always so amazed by, by this thing that we have, this community that we have. And so, um, you know, I, I just think it's important though, because, but with, with that comes just the reality that in order to maintain the, this thing that we have, it, it does require hard work, it requires creativity, it requires candor, it requires cooperation. And so, I mean, and those are all the things that, that I try to, to, to instill um, in any of the interactions that I have with, with, with my neighbors. Um, and so, so again, I, I think that that's what you would be able to expect if, if you were to cast a, a vote my way. Um, because I very much feel this, this opportunity to, to share in that responsibility, to ensure that this thing that we have been given, the spirit of it, um, is, is, it's more than just preserving, it's adding to it. It's um, creating, you know, creating anew with, with these things that, that we all have. I think that's part of the spirit of Soar, uh, the spirit of, of, of Savano. So thank you. Thank you for all of this. Um, I didn't get any of the cookies either, so I don't, I don't really know what that means. But, uh, but I won't hold it against the group that ate all the cookies <laughs> or any of the other candidates that took all the cookies. Yeah. So. Thank you.
Okay, thank you for being such an excellent audience, uh, so respectful and, and such. Um, I, I'm an organizer, I'm a problem solver, um, and I hope I can use those qualities to um, do the job, whether I'm on the board or not. I'm going to stay involved with this community because I'm committed to it. But I'd like to see if there's ways to increase that communication between board members and the community. Um, info about topics or actions that, are, that might be um, going to happen at a board meeting, if those could get to people ahead of time so that, um, so that more people would come to the meeting and you know, know what was going on. I want that communication there because the better we communicate, the better we can work as a team, the more unified we can be. Um, I have this idea about, if I'm a, a board member, I'd like to do like a topic talk, you know, maybe once a month where you just get together and um, share thoughts on whatever topic um, it might be, whether it's um, the pools or the sidewalks or whatever the, the concern of the neighborhood is. Um, and that way, um, board members could get a real feel from the community of um, kind of a hands-on kind of thing. I'd also like to use the new website to um, spread the word about our CCNRs, like having a section, did you know? Just like they do on the next door and they tell you about um, recycling and all those rules of recycling. If we did that on a regular basis, people might be able to um, understand um, the rules of the communities. But I'm all about improving community unity and I hope that I can be one of the new members of this HOA's board of directors. Thank you. Does that mean I'm last but not least? <laughs> That's right. Um, so I first want to say thank you to all of you for coming here. Um, and uh, I want to extend my respect and gratitude for those who have served on the board for many years. Um, so my, I mentioned briefly I was born in New Jersey. My parents were immigrants from Taiwan. When I was 10, we moved to Asia, and then we moved to communist China. And then because of my ballet dance performance career, I kind of travel hopped the world a little bit. Spent some time in Europe, spent some time in the Middle East, deep down south in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, and then ended up in Boston. And, and I finally came to Tucson to pursue my MFA at the School of Dance, getting to my point here. And as a what, what people call now a third culture kid, it's very hard for people like me to find a place they can call home because we can bop in and out any, any person, any language, any social situation or circumstance, we can fit in really easily. And when I drove up here eight years ago to teach my first ballet class at Ballet Rincon, I was just floored. I drove up down Savano Boulevard, pulled into Seven Generations Way, and I couldn't tell you what drew me to here. It's that same artistic inspiration. It was like, there's something here that's really special. And, and from the first day I finished that dance class, and I was walking, and I was like, oh, there's a house for sale to go home to my husband. We live central. And it just, and so finally we moved here three years ago. So I might not have the most, per se, board experience. I'm a fast learner. I'm a great communicator. I'm task-oriented. I'm organized. And I'm willing and able and really wanting to serve. So thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give them all a big hand. Right. interest in the 2020 board election and for attending this forum. We especially thank the candidates for their participation and for being super duper brave enough to be video recorded. Um, and a heartfelt thank you to all those volunteers who have always been there to help us stuff the envelopes and all the other stuff. You all know who you are. Thank you so much. I enjoyed meeting all of you. And um, we couldn't do any of it without you guys. And this concludes the candidates forum. At this time, please feel free. We'll get up and mingle. They're gonna get up, but you guys are welcome to ask them questions, get to know them, they'll hang out. There's still food back there, please eat. And um, we're also gonna do um, an electronic voting demonstration, and you can even vote. 
because we have computers ready for you. So thank you so much, everybody.